Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to play tug with your dogs the right way. Tug is probably my absolute favorite impulse control game, and it's also a really great way to teach a release cue, aka drop it, and it's also a really, really great way to work off some of your dog's energy and use their brain as well. So before I get into the video, there are a couple of myths about tug with your dog that I want to talk about. The first one is that playing tug with your dog will make them aggressive or more prone to bite someone. And don't worry, this is completely not true. Playing tug with your dog is not going to make them aggressive. It's not gonna make them wanna bite anybody. What tug does do is give them a really constructive outlet for all the natural energy and drive that they have. The most popular dog breeds today, Labs, Golden Retrievers, German Shepherds, and many, many, many others, although the majority of them are just pets and not actually working dogs or sporting dogs, they still have that inherent drive to want to work and they have all that energy and they need to use it. That natural drive isn't something that you're gonna be able to tamp down. So the best thing to do is give them a constructive outlet for all that energy so that they don't start chewing your table legs and barking excessively, digging up your yard, etc, etc, etc. The second myth I hear all the time is that people think they shouldn't let the dog win the tug game by having the toy either during the game or at the end. And usually people say that you shouldn't do that because it's gonna your dog will think that they're in charge or the alpha or some other kind of nonsense. And again, totally false. <laughs> Completely not true. We actually should be letting our dogs win at tug because it's a really great way to build confidence and build their desire to want to play the game. You wouldn't ever want to play a game that you always lost at, right? Well, neither does your dog. The one caveat I have here is that if you have a dog that is displaying resource guarding behaviors with toys, then that's something that you're probably going to want to take care of before you try and play tug with them. Okay, so all that aside, let's get into the video. So you're going to start with your dog in front of you. If you have a smaller dog or a puppy, you'll probably be more comfortable sitting on the floor. Bring out a toy and encourage them to chase the toy and tug at it. You can squeak it if it has a squeaker, drag it around on the floor, tell them get it, get it, get it, or tug, or whatever is going to get them excited and want to play with the toy. The key here is we're going to want to get them really, really excited. So look for little growls, shaking the toy, tugging at it with lots of enthusiasm. That's all good stuff. That's what we're looking for. Once they've reached peak excitement, we're going to stop the game. And you're going to do that by holding the toy still, bringing it close to your body, and holding it close to their mouth. Now, if you have a dog that's really snappy, or if you have a puppy, you're gonna have to play around and see how close to their mouth you can hold the toy without them going for your hand. Um, it's not the same for every dog, so that's something you're gonna have to play around with and find what works for you and your dog. But by holding it close to their mouth and close to your body, you have control of the toy and you're holding it still, so it becomes super boring. Now, depending on your dog, you might have to hold onto the toy for a while, but I promise you, I've done this game with countless dogs of all kinds of breeds and ages. Every single one of them will let the toy go eventually if you hold it still. Because again, it becomes boring and there's no use for them to stay hanging onto the toy when it's not getting them anything. Eventually, they will give up and they will let it go. When they do so, bring the toy behind your back in the beginning. Eventually, you're going to have the toy out in front of the dog. But for now, when we're introducing this game, Put the toy behind your back to make it easier for them to concentrate. You're going to ask your dog to sit and give you some eye contact and be calm for a moment. When they've done that, bring the toy out again and again squeak it, drag it around, tell them get it, get it, get it, or tug, or whatever cue you want to use, and encourage them to get the toy again. And if they're like Scarlet and they like to retrieve, you can certainly toss the toy for them to bring back if that's something they like to do. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Now it's just a matter of repeating the sequence and starting to challenge the dog more once they've got the hang of it. Playing the game in this way where we get them really excited and then ask them to stop does a few things. Number one, impulse control. Learning to wait for the things that they want. Super, super important for dogs to learn. Second, playing the game in this way helps our dogs learn to go from a high state of arousal to calm and back again. This is a especially important for puppies and for dogs that get overly excited. This game, like I said in the beginning, is also a really, really great way to teach a drop it cue. I use the word out for my dog. You can use whatever word you like. So after several repetitions of playing this game, you should start to notice your dog dropping the toy faster and faster when you stop moving it. This is the perfect time to start adding a verbal cue like drop it or out. So when you bring the toy close to your body and stop moving it, tell them out or drop it, whatever cue you want to use, and they've already gotten into the habit of dropping the toy at this time, so it's a great time to pair the verbal cue 
with the action that they'll already be doing. Over time, you won't have to stop moving the toy and bring it close to your body and all that. You'll just be able to say the cue and they'll know what it means. Once your dog has gotten the hang of this game, it's time to start challenging them. So in the beginning, we were putting the toy behind our back to make it easier for our dogs to look at us instead of looking at the toy. Now that they've got a hang of the game, we want to challenge them by keeping the toy in view after they drop it and asking them to look at us and not the toy. And eventually you'll be able to really challenge them by holding the toy closer and closer to them and asking them to ignore it and look at you instead. You can even play around with squeaking it or moving it around on the ground. dog for too much too fast or else they will fail and we always want to be setting our dogs up to succeed. So when you're done playing the game, give your dog the toy and tell them all done. If they're like Scarlet, they're also going to want a nice snuggle session at the end of the game. Alright, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and you can also follow us on Instagram and on Tumblr at Mystery Mutt Butts. Have a great day, and happy training!